get a WFX Malice here back after a very long break from my online presence. Previously I did a lot on Twitch, uh, Twitch streaming doesn't suit my lifestyle anymore so I thought I'd uh, move over to YouTube so here we are. Enough about that, what are we doing today? Recently I purchased a 3D printer and wow, what a lot of fun they are. If you're considering buying one, um, I recommend go for it. Do a bit of research, make sure you get the right one that's for you. Uh, make sure it's going to do what you want it to do in the conditions you're in. Um, so when I first got my 3D printer, I thought it was just going to be a matter of going online to websites like Thingiverse and downloading other people's models and printing them off, which you can do. However, some of the designs online don't really print that well. They're not very well thought out. Maybe they just don't suit your requirements. So uh, I decided I'd jump over and learn a bit of CAD and start doing some designing of my own. I've only been doing it a short time and well, come a long way. Well, I think I have anyway. Um, so the project I had was a wall mount bracket uh, that allowed a bit of spacing. Recently, I built this wall hanging PC. Now it is a scrapper. It's only made out of old parts that I uh, pulled out of my recent upgrade. Uh, not quite finished yet, still needs a power button, waiting on that to turn up. Um, but on the back here, you'll see we've got the riser card for the graphics card. Um, we've also got a little bit of cables there, a little bit of cable management that we've got to take care of to be able to run behind. So I needed a little bit of space to keep this off of the sim rig that it's mounting to. Um, so I came up with this great design. It was interlocking, so it wouldn't uh, allow the PC to slide if I knocked it when I jumped in and out of the sim rig or from vibration from racing. Um, I made this great design, I clicked away and went to print it and looked at the size of it. Um, I'd made it 40 odd mil, plus then 8 mil for the other half of it um, to mount to. It overshot, it was nearly 50 mil. It was way too big, it was going to keep this thing mounted way too far up the wall. So I started scaling it down. Well this didn't work because all the geometry for the mathematics that I'd done in the background just wasn't lining up. So I started clicking around and I worked out a way, I added a couple of constraints, I took a whole bunch of the measurements away and bang, I had something that was dynamic, which is brilliant. You want something for a smaller mount, maybe a speaker to hang off the wall, scale it down. You want something bigger because you've got a large piece of artwork you want to hang off the wall or a wall mount PC, away you go. Just drag and print. So let's have a look at what we've done. Right, so we're going to jump into Fusion. Let's create a new component. Uh, let's get a top down view and let's create a sketch on that pane. Let's go and add some lines. We're not going to add any dimensions to these lines because we want it to be dynamic. It's only one line that I'm going to add a dimension to, and that is this top line here. We're going to make that 7mm. I'm making that 7mm because I'm using countersunk tapered head screws uh, so I need some space to be able to put that in there. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of points. Uh, there's a bit of a bug with Fusion at the moment where I can't select the line while I'm casting to put a point so we just put a random one and then all of a sudden there we go. Lock those on. Uh, we're going to create a couple of boxes. These are going to be our locking tabs. These are going to require dimensions. So we're going to want that 7mm by 4mm and we're going to want another one down here protruding. We're going to want this one 3mm, oh, wrong side, 4mm by 3mm. All right, let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, and now we're going to want a couple of lines. Let's go construction lines. We're going to want that midpoint to midpoint. Then we're going to want one from here to out here. I've done these in two separate lines so it doesn't uh, mess up our geometry. So midpoint to midpoint to out here. Um, oh, yep, anywhere there's good. Nope, let's try that again. Done, and we'll just delete that line I accidentally created. Done. All right, now we're going to make these lines parallel. This is why we did it in two separate lines. Done, and this one here we're going to make coincidental to the lower point. Snap that on, and this one here we're going to make that coincidental also. 
All right, so that makes this somewhat dynamic. We need a couple more construction lines, uh, midpoints to here and midpoint to here. We're just gonna make sure that that is, there we go, horizontal. Now we should be able to drag this and as you can see, it skews based on the relative sizes. Um, now to make this work properly, we're going to want a fair pitch on this angle here so that they do lock in and we can prove that this is uh, symmetrical. We'll finish that sketch, zoom back in and let's create another component and let's copy this component, make sure we click create copy, spin that around 180 degrees, well I'm too far, and we'll drag that up and we can see that locks onto that point, that point, and we're gonna have a nice square looking bracket. Um, now you might not need this much pitch on it for you. I'm gonna be hanging a wall mounted PC off of it. Uh, so it's gonna be having a fair bit of weight down on here. So we wanna make sure that that's not gonna tip and rock over. All right, let's cancel that. We don't need that copy at this point. And let's go back to that drawing. Okay, now we're gonna jump into the extrude. Uh, so we're going to extrude this shape as the wedge that you see and we're going to make that 40 mil. And you can really make that any size you want. I'm making it 40 because it's going to be bolted to some aluminium extrusion 40 by 40. And as you can see there, we've got our nice shape. Now let's uh, extrude the cutout. And when you can't see the sketch, just open the component back up, sketches and make that visible. Um, you can't select that part of the sketch, just hide the body temporarily. Make sure you bring that body back, otherwise it will create a new body and that's very frustrating. Now we're going to offset this. Uh, I'm going to offset it 10 and I'm going to make it 20. This gives us a little bit of wiggle room and the other one we're going to extrude is the protruding tab. Uh, once again, we're going to make that offset and I'm going to offset that 12.5 and, and we're going to make that 10, uh, 15 rather. That gives us, like I said, a little bit of wiggle room around the outside. Perfect. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a hole uh, not just yet actually we're going to create a new sketch on this pane and we're going to add a couple of construction lines just to center this nice and neatly and didn't quite work the way i wanted it to let's just back out of that and retry on the interior, spin that around and let's lock that to midpoint and inside midpoint, down to that midpoint. Perfect. All right, so now we can create our hole, finish sketch and hole. And we'll wait for Fusion to catch up with us. go and we want that countersunk uh, the head of the bolt the head of the screw is seven mil oh not 70 well slow down and we want a taper we want that screw thread is about 3.5 and let's drag this angle back to 80. All right, we've got a nice fitting spot there for our countersunk screw. Plenty of meat for that to grab onto. And uh oh, we're not going to get a screwdriver in. So let's do another sketch right here on this outside pane. And let's throw a circle on there. 
and we'll make that five mil to allow a screwdriver to get through and let's extrude a cut through there right in there and let's make a, a cut and let's drag that back through freehand that should be more than enough and there we go now that's pretty much it for that um, we can print two of those tabs off and rotate them around as I showed before and create our nice interlocking brackets um, let's do a copy let's just prove this still works create copy rotate that around 180 degrees and let's drag that down into place bang there you go just like that two screw holes one for each side and we're going to have the uh, cutout hole there to be able to access that with a screwdriver okay back with a quick edit uh, remember we talked about that wiggle room well we missed something there um, i'm just going to edit this sketch and we're going to draw a line from midpoint here and we're going to lock that onto this edge here we're going to make that parallel to this angle that way they stay dynamic with each other um, and finish that sketch we're going to edit the feature and just take that corner off just like that um, another thing i will do is i know my 3d printer um, doesn't print sharp edges like this as uh, neatly as they show on the diagram here so we're going to uh, just take those edges off just so that there's no burrs uh, there's no little extra bits of plastic that's going to prevent this from locking in and gripping like we'd hope to um, so we're just going to make a 0.4 mil rounded corner and let's just uh, have a look at what we've done there uh, let's make a copy once again top down rotate 180 degrees just going to rotate this whole thing so we get the true idea so previously you can see this is coming down and these edges here are going to lock they're not going to allow if that corner was down here uh, so as we as we drop it into position whoop, we're going to have that one there enter and we will rotate it around manually as we lower that into position and as you can see here those edges are cut out because the printer is going to print across here slightly and would have printed probably a bit of an extra burr on that top edge so that way this will sit down nice and flush nice and neat like that and we'll end up with this nice square block like we see there all right let's head over to the 3d printer and see how it looks conclusion as I mentioned at the start of the video uh, this design all the mathematics were done around a 40 mil bracket thereabouts the part of this that isn't scalable is those locking tabs so as we squash this down we changed the pitch of the uh, hanging part the wedge the first version I made was a fail that locking tab with the uh, chamfer at the midpoint didn't work. I ended up having to grind it right down. Um, once I did that, it did work. As I was grinding away bit by bit, I was testing it, got it to the point that it did snap together. Then I couldn't get it undone. So I had to wedge it apart with a screwdriver and hack into it a little bit um, and kept filing until I got it to the point where it did work. I went back and I redesigned it and I changed that chamfer from a midpoint all the way back to the hard edge of the surface. Once that happened, they just slide together perfectly. 
that angle is parallel still to the to the wedge and just slides in nicely and as you can see interlocking so it's not going to fall off if I do bump it getting in and out of the sim rig. I'll be uploading these files to Thingiverse. Link will be down below in the description, including the F3D file, which is the Fusion 3D original file that allows you to get into the master and make edits. Alternatively, follow along with the instructions previous and you can create it yourself. All my designs, I try to upload the F3D files. Um, it just allows people to be able to tailor their design to suit their requirements rather than reinvent the wheel. I recommend if you do upload anything to Thingiverse or any of these sort of websites, um, include the original. Um, people can then learn off of what you've done, perhaps improve on it, give you some feedback. Um, no one's going to be ripping you off. Look, at the end of the day, no one's getting rich off making wall mount brackets, camera mounts and spiral vases. Uh, like and subscribe, add your comments, add your questions down below. Uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for watching.